All right, let's start with the image plane. Go to front, press shift and we go to back and select image. And let's center that. All right, now I will add a cylinder. Change the size to match the image. Now let's increase the rotation segments to let's make it 24 because we will need more subdivision and for the height segments I will increase that number until that each polygon is kind of square. Also let's turn off caps because we will not use them. Now I can at FFT deformer, I will increase the Y segments. Let's make it eight. I will switch to points mode and rectangle selection. Select these points and scale them until you get that, that shape. I think we will need more grid points for the Y, so let's add two. Then I will continue to scale. I think that this is gonna be enough. Let's switch to model mode, right click on the cylinder and say current state the object. You can either delete that or hide that let's just hide for it now i will also duplicate that cylinder and rename that i reference because i will use that later but for now let's turn that off let's add another fft deformer press alt and select fft Let's make the Y points to 8. This time I will use that FFT for rotate polygons. But I will face a problem. If I rotate them, I will start to lose the shape. To eliminate that, I will use my favorite deformer shrink wrap deformer put that shrink wrap, wrap deformer after the ffc so remember that cylinder that i copied i will put that into a subdivision surface and make it editable so it's perfectly smooth and i can use that for projection let's hide that and go to shrink wrap deformer and put that I reference object into the target object. So now I can rotate as much as I can and my shape will be the same. Now let's turn the points so that I can match my object to that reference object, especially these lines. Alright, that looks good. Now I will right click on my cylinder and say current state the object and hide that one. Now let's select these edges. And they are not perfectly aligned with the image plane. So I will go back. And I will try to rotate more like these ones. Yes, no, it's a lot better. Let's select these. 
By the way, if you want to make that selection, select the first one, then press Ctrl and Shift, then select the last one. Okay, I made my selections. Now I will right click and select bevel. Don't change anything, just slide the bevel them. Then I want to convert these edges to polygons. To do that, press Ctrl and switch to polygon mode. Now I can select normal move and push these polygons down like that. Also, I will put that cylinder into a subdivision surface, press Alt and select subdivision surface. But I will undo that and I will put the subdivision surface before moving the polygons so I can see the shape a lot better. You will get these triangles and angles, but subdivision surface is gonna fix them for you, so it's not gonna much a problem. Let's enable the lines. Now let's close these gaps. Double click, switch to scale, press T, then control, then scale. After that, right click, select. Where is collapse? Yes, this one. Also, I will add a loop cut right here. I will do the same thing for the top. Now let's try to model the lid. First, I will select this top polygons, press Ctrl and extrude. After that, I will make an extrude inner. Also, I will slide these edges, like supporting edges, so I won't need to add another loop cut. By the way, my shape is a little off, but you can add FFT deformer one more time and get the shape, but I will skip that for now. Also, I will make another extrude inner. Then extrude. After that, I will add another loop cut right here. Also, I will not use these polygons, so I can delete them. I will go to selection, select loop selection, or you can press V, select, and loop selection. I think this is easier. And I will select that loop, right click, split, also I will scale these inner edges, then select these edges, press Ctrl and extrude. Also these should be up, so select them and move. Then I will press T to see which scale mode. Also, I will, I will press Ctrl then scale them. Also, scale up. Now I will add my loop cuts. Also, I need to make these two objects into one group, so subdivision surface could work just like that. Now let's try the top part to do that. I will use the same technique. Select these polygons with loop selection, then split them. And I think I need to scale this slightly and move them up. Then select these outer edges, double click on them, press Ctrl, extrude. Then I will scale them with Ctrl. 
fix with them one more time and the last time this time i will scale them something like that press ctrl scale then select right click collapse now we have another visitor here like that type shape to do that let's add a cylinder and change the size until the match the shape and that looks okay but i need to remove these slightly so i can make space for that pipe so let's first set the height segments to one we will not need them and for the rotation segments for most of the time eight polygons or segments will be enough and in that case we can use that but for that i need to rotate these polygons so that this angle would line up like that now i need to add some loop cuts here and here so i can select them and extrude inner now I will switch to points mode, select slide and move these polygons to match that cylinder. Okay, at this point we don't need that cylinder anymore, so I will just press Ctrl and move this polygons. And another one, but this time I will rotate them slightly. Now let's add the loop cuts for our sporting edges, like that, like that. Also, let's make an extrude inner, then select extrude. Then we can delete them. I will also add another loop cut here 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 also here let's press q perfect also we can add another look at here then select these edges then dissolve them so that they you will, we will get all these quad polygons. Alright everyone, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorials. Bye.